This morning's reading comes from the Holy Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 22 through 34. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they never sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small things as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the fields today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? And you of little faith, and do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and all these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with the treasures in heaven that does not fail where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. This uh, files under sermons that the pastor also needs to hear, especially. So, goodness gracious, I'm so glad to be able to share this message with you. Um... Well, I don't have to tell you this. Uh oh, is it? It seemed like it was forward. No, nope, it's not. Okay, is it good now? All right. Well, I don't have to tell you this. Um, I don't need any statistics to back it up. I don't even need a case study to prove this to you. You can easily look it up. But you won't have to, because you already know this. We live in a time period where anxiety and depression is at an all-time high. How is that possible? We live in a time with incredible technology. Technological advancements that help sustain us. We hardly experience a climate more or less than 72 degrees. We talked about that last week. We're not worried about starving. We're not worried about what we will eat and what we will drink. We don't sit around and agonize over the weather. We don't agonize over whether we'll make it through another winter like previous generations. We are incredibly well fed, or at least we could be if we didn't gorge ourselves with empty calories and junk food. So what is it? Why are we so afraid of everything? More than usual more than previous generations. We can see weather coming, we can see disaster coming, we can see diseases come into our communities, wars, we're way ahead of that. We can see that stuff coming from a mile away. And yet we are the most terrified generation in human history, our anxiety levels are extremely high for human existence. Suicide is at an all-time high. And it was already at an all-time high before that. Before the pandemic, 10 years ago it was at an all-time high. And we could go back and say, you thought it was high then. Look at today. The likelihood that a person is born in America 
and can live a comfortable life by almost every historic standards is extremely high. If you're born in America today, you're going to live. Compared to our ancestors, you're probably not going to starve. You're probably not going to die of disease unless it's self-induced. I mean, if you smoke four packs of cigarettes a day, you might die of lung cancer. But most of our diseases are very rare, especially with death. This stuff about God caring for you more than the grass is never more true than today. So why are we so terrified in America? Does anyone have an answer? Does anyone know? I have a little bit of an allergy, I'm sorry. So if you hear me sniffle, I apologize. The problem's not philosophical. We've tried that. It's not psychological. We have more psychology technology than we've ever had. We have more psych drugs and more counseling opportunities and more, you know, trained people who can help people through problems than we've ever had. But we still have an incredible increase of patience. The problem is not social either. It's not, so, it's not a sociological problem. Say what you will about social media. But we have more contact with more people each minute of each day than we ever have. You have to work very hard to be isolated from the population today. You don't even have to leave your home. It's not a sociological problem. Of course you know what I'm gonna say. The problem is theological. And before you reject that, give me a chance. We have a theological problem. Now, more than ever. Yes, we have better technology and yes, we are safer and cleaner and could be even more physically healthy if we listen to our own technology, yet we still are terrified of the future. That's what anxiety is. Anxiety is being terrified of what may happen next. Why? Because in our computers, in our information, in our modern conveniences, we have convinced ourselves that we are so in control of our environment. We tell ourselves that we have mastered the universe in which we live. Can you see that? Can you see that arrogance? We will spend endless amounts of time putting newer and newer laws on the books for public safety. We keep sharpening the pencil every generation. We try and make it sharper and sharper and sharper and sharper and sharper. And we freak out because the pencil keeps getting smaller and smaller. We don't know what to do. We have falsely convinced ourselves that we are in control but deep down inside, deep down in our hearts, we know that we're not. We have got to confess that although we may be able to fry eggs and tie our shoes without looking, we are not ultimately in control of our lives. We didn't initiate our lives. And we don't know the hour of our death. We are just not in control. And it's for good reason.
because we're not in charge of where all this is going. Only God is in charge. And we have to confess and admit that. Only God is in charge. This is a verse from Lambios, book one, verse one. Ray is smiling because he knows Tom Lambios. Hopefully he's online. He's a friend from Prince of Peace, the sister church that planted this church. He was one of the early people that helped us get off the ground. And he would always come up when I was at Prince of Peace, working at Prince of Peace, right before service, we'd be going down the aisle, right? We'd be ready to start and he'd be ushering and everything. And he'd tap me on the shoulder. I'm like, what? we're starting. And he says, who's in charge? And I would say, I, I don't know who the head usher is, but we're going to like, I think there's people in the sound booth. Yes. Is my mic working? Yeah. Can you hear my? Yes. Do we have readers? Yes. He goes, no, 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 no. Who is in charge? I was like, oh, I know the answer to this. Yes, I know. God is in charge. He's like, yes, that is right. God is in charge. It seems so simple. But doesn't it fly in the face of our biggest fears? Isn't that statement or confession the most important faith statement that we can make? That's why there's only one verse and only one book in the book of Lambias. Because nothing more needs to be said, really. And it's not just that God is in control of our future. It's that in Jesus Christ, God has taken full responsibility of us. He has given us his life so that we may know the depth and to what extent God loves us. That's what in charge means. Taking complete and full responsibility of us. God has taken charge by giving us his word and sacrament to remind us that we are his. We are a part of his kingdom. So I want to ask you a question. And it's a hard question. I know no one would want this, so I'll preface it this way. Or I know no one would ask for this. But could you lose everything? Could you lose everything? All your possessions, everything, and still have your faith. Could you have a Job moment and still have your relationship with God? And I realize this is a bigger question for younger people, and I know our congregation is a little on the younger side. I know people that are over 75, sometimes with, you know, all sorts of things that go wrong, you're like, Lord, take me now. I would love that. But for our younger folk, you know, to give up everything is terrifying. Could you lose everything? Meaning worldly, worldly riches and still see and trust and have faith in the God who has taken charge of your care? That's a big question. That's one to contemplate. The last line that is quoted in this passage um, is one of my favorites. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I'd like to kind of reverse that or flip it around a little bit and say it a different way. And I want to get this just right, so I'm going to read it. 
If your heart is sickened with worry because you have invested in a future you cannot control or you cannot pull off, you need to make a new alternative investment. I'm just saying that walking around worried all the time and in fear is not healthy and it's not paying off. It's time to start acknowledging and confessing the truth about the God who created you without your permission. The God who sustains you in your every real need not the wants you convince yourself that you need, because I do that all the time. Your real needs. The God who has redeemed us through his son Jesus Christ from the mess that we've made of it. The God who has plans for us to prosper in his kingdom both now and forever. Amen. So let us go with confidence in what God has done and with great humility that admits without hesitation that we have very little control over our circumstances. And that's okay for the Christian. That's okay for the one who trusts in God. It is God who is ultimately in charge. This is his story. And we have been grafted in that story for all eternity. Amen.